Hello, my name is Celito Rodriguez and the title of this presentation is What are business schools doing for business today? In this presentation I will uh, start off by um, giving a brief introduction about the goal of the presentation. I will uh, talk about the report in a nutshell, basically give a summary about uh, the report that is the basis for this presentation. I will discuss a little bit about uh, the practical guide to content analysis and I will answer the question whether the researchers used the practical guide uh, when they created this report. I will give uh, some recommendations for improvement and finally I will give my opinion about the quality of uh, the research. The goal of this presentation uh, uh, was basically to select a paper from the content analysis reader uh, samples covering class and, and focus upon one, uh, whether the researchers used the practical guide to create the studies and papers, uh, two, uh, recommending to uh, improvements helping uh, the paper better adhere to the practical guide and and three uh, give my opinion regarding the uh, quality of this paper okay um, so the, the the title of the report that I'm going to uh, give the uh, presentation based on uh, again was called uh, what are business schools doing for business today and just to give you uh, a very brief summary what this report was about, um, basically this report examined uh, disparity between business school focus and business community uh, needs. Uh, this report was conducted in, in 2009 and basically it looked at 200 corporate job descriptions. Uh, it found uh, 140 skills that were commonly cited as required. Um, they use 100 uh, school of business course uh, syllabi, uh, 20 textbooks uh, used by, uh, by these schools, and they found that disparity is ongoing and problematic. Uh, in other words, uh, what schools were teaching uh, in 2009 was actually uh, was not a par with what business the business community was looking for. Um, so based on this re report, they gave recommendations to close the gap, um, the gap you know between uh, you know what uh, the business community need and what those schools were teaching. And so, so basically, they established what is, was called the old business school versus uh, the new vision. So that, in a nutshell, uh, is basically what uh, um, the the research was about, and my presentation then it's going to be uh, about uh, this specific report. Now, before we uh, dive in, uh, it is important to explain what the practical guide is when it comes to content analysis, um, and basically. Uh, the practical guy uh, recommends uh, procedural steps to content analysis. Uh, it also raises issues that uh, may come up during the, uh, the research. Uh, it notes the junctures at which content analysis need uh, to make decisions and it suggests what they need to take into consideration in making those decisions. So now that we have a uh, brief introduction to, uh, about what the practical guide is. Now we're going to look into uh, things that were in this report and then we will basically um, determine whether uh, those the authors of uh, that report used the practical guide. So one of the first questions that uh, I'm going to try to answer is, did the researchers use uh, the practical guide? Well, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the research had these components. Uh, it had a summary or abstract. Uh, it had a table of contents. 
Uh, it had a review of the, lit the literature used for the research. Uh, also had an account of the framework adopted, a description of a uh, research design, and the complete list of references used in the report. Uh, so based on, uh, on these findings, um, we can definitely say that the researcher used uh, the practical guide because these are some of the uh, recommendations or components that the practical guide suggests in any uh, research paper for content analysis. Now, when it comes to uh, some recommendations for improvement, um, another uh, recommendation from the practical guide is uh, appendices containing materials uh, to read beyond the report. Um, I think that uh, this report uh, would be improved by having appendices. It didn't have one because in my case, for example, I was interested a lot in this, uh, uh, in this uh, research and that's why I, I chose this one. But I wanted to look at more material. I wanted to look at, you know, beyond what the report was talking about, and that was not possible. So that's one of my recommendations. Uh, another thing that I would recommend is like a follow-up study to determine if disparity um, uh, decreased in a period of time, let's say five years, um, you know. Um, so I, I am, this uh, research was conducted in 2009. Uh, we're now in, in um, you know, 2015, and I am very interested in finding out whether uh, the gap that existed in 2009 uh, also exists today, or if those schools actually took the recommendation in the report and, and closed those gaps. My opinion about the quality of the research is it was uh, nevertheless an excellent report, uh, very uh, knowledgeable, I mean very entertaining. It shows that the researchers really mastered uh, content analysis. Um, again, uh, as I said in my recommendations, uh, I think that uh, a, a follow-up study would uh, uh, help determine if recommendation would decrease the existing gaps. So um, I would basically uh, suggest that uh, a follow-up would be um, would be there. Okay, and, and basically with those opinions, we uh, uh, conclude this um, uh, short presentation. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope that it has been uh, informative.